Good afternoon, good evening, hello and happy Pride to everyone. Welcome to Pride and Joy, the beauty of us. My name is Bradley Miller. My pronouns are she, he, him and her. I am with MAC Cosmetics based in New York City. And I am also the global education lead for Welcome, which is an employee run resource group here at Estee Lauder Companies. So I am here today to share the floor, the virtual floor with some incredible human beings. And without further delay, I wanna welcome so you can see their gorgeous faces. Welcome Miss Lena Bradford. Welcome, Miss uh, Mr. Kyle Farmery. Hello. <laughs> Hi, gorgeous. Hello, hello. Uh, welcome, Laith Ashley. And the stunning How's everyone. Hello. Good. And the stunning Dominique Castellano. Hi, cutie pies. <laughs> Hi, gorgeous. <laughs> First and foremost, thank you all for being here. You all are gorgeous human beings. I follow all of you on social media. I know you all personally, and I'm so excited for the world to get to know you right now. So I'm gonna hand it to Miss uh, Lena Bradford to tell us a little bit about you, and your life, and who you are. Thank you, Bradley. And hi, everybody. I love you all as well. And all the virtual people out there, y'all, we are so connected because of all of this. So let's feel it and get all the way into it. That's what he said. <laughs> well, first off, sugar, <laughs> I am a princess of light. Um, I um, have been very blessed on this planet to, you know, uh, come from some really good stock. You know, my grandmother, you know, as most grandmothers are, the matriarch in the family helped me understand me from the jump. So from the age of four, you know, she helped my mom and my dad understand me and, you know, my, my spirituality and my other womanness, you know? So um, I, I, I've known who I was from the jump. And I think that when you know that you go through this path, continuing to grab elements of yourself, planting those seeds and watching them grow. So, you know, where I'm at today is basically kind of where I was from the jump, but with more branches. You know, I, I think that when you feel like you're done growing is when it's all over for you. So for me, I, I like being connected with not only just people, but myself. And when you do that, you're empathetic and you're very open to the universe and to people's energies and you listen, you know, I'm a listener and I'm, I'm not a preacher. I've just, you know, personally given you personal experiences of where it is that I've come from. And if it helps you, hey, that's what it's all about, right? Well, aside, this is my first mute mistake. But I mean, incredible. Lena, what are your pronouns and how do you identify? She, her, Miss Thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, girl, what? You know, listen, call me Lena. At the end of the day, labels are something that I wear, not that I am. You know, I don't like to be checked into a box. You know, I remember growing up being a biracial child was like, you know, um, they, they only gave you a certain amount of thing you do. So I'm like, well, honey, I'm a Benetton ad, honey. I've got so much going on in my family gene. How can I put that in there? So I've, I've always stayed with that, you know, that and being ageless and all those things. It's just like, that to me is very petty. When you speak to the person, you get the essence and the light of where they're coming from. And I'm just too dynamic of a chick to be put into any of that mascara. <laughs> yes, speaking of the love of mascara, I want to introduce Kyle Farmery. Hi, Kyle. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well now that I'm smiling at your beautiful face and those gorgeous red lips. Oh. Ruby Wu. Tell us a little about you, uh, Kyle. Um, so my name is Kyle. I am born and raised in New York City. My pronouns are he, him. Um, I started in nightlife in New York when I was about 15, 16, which is where I was able to start expressing myself and um, just becoming who I really am. Uh, you know, lots of practice at home and then going out coming home. Da, da, da. Um, I did that for a bunch of years and I recently started my own design label, Spark Kyle Studio, which is all rhinestone, Swarovski, embellished, anything, everything. Um, so that's what I'm doing, where I'm at. Did you rhinestone that gorgeous look that you're wearing right now? I did. Absolutely. And just for everyone watching Kyle's camera, about half the shoes 
behind him are also stoned by him. Um, uh, our love of heels runs deep, you and I, and we, we go back, way back on that. Absolutely. And of course, Lena Bradford as well. Uh, Mr. Ashley, would you please tell us about yourself? Hello, handsome. Hey, everyone. So again, my name is Leith Ashley. My pronouns are he, him, his. Um, I wear a lot of different hats. So I'm I'm a model, um, I'm a singer songwriter, and I'm an actor, I'm an activist. And um, I did start off before I started anything in entertainment um, as a, a, a counselor for homeless youth. And I, so I, I had experience in that realm um, as well. And yeah, I, my identity is something, something I learned actually from, from another uh, trans masculine person um, who's a really close friend of mine, his name is Ezra. And he, he said something that really, um, really stayed with me and it was my transition is always in transition and I sat back with that and I was like you know what that is very true where I am right now with my identity is very different from where it was in the very beginning I've always been who I am but there's always there tends to be um, this pressure to kind of conform to one way to so that we can be accepted and all these things and and we're all individuals we're all um, like Lena said, so dynamic, so different, so beautiful. Such so we we need to showcase that, and and whatever is authentic to you, be that. I cu I couldn't agree more. And honestly, I could sit and listen to you speak all day. So I'm so excited for you to to answer questions in a minute. But last but not least, my sister, Miss Dominique Castellano, please tell us about yourself, gorgeous. Hi, everybody. Um, so my name is Dominique Castellano. My pronouns are she and they. Um, so I go in between more masculine phase and more feminine phase. Obviously, today, it's a very femme, Barbie doll look, um, which we love. Um, I am a fashion model and also a visual artist. So I can show you a little bit of my art on my walls. <laughs> And now recently is delving deep into the world of digital art and NFT art. So if you guys are, you know, into that, hit me up. Um, and I'd love to talk about it a little bit more. And I try to always bring my activism into my art. So I know a lot of like art institutions, when you walk into them, you don't really see paintings of trans bodies in classical art museums and um, it's time to change that narrative. Incredible. From all corners of the United States and the world, we're in every industry, right? We are in every type of life situation and it, it makes me so inspired to know that you're doing so many things, all of you actually. Um, so as you all could have gathered listening to everyone's uh, snippets of their stories, today we're gonna be talking so much about beauty, visibility, um, activism, and specifically trans and gender non-conforming excellence. So I hope you're all ready. I hope we broke the ice because um, we're gonna dive right in. And my first question is right back actually to you, Miss Dominique, um, about, about us. So as trans and gender non-conforming people, what makes you feel beautiful and enables you to walk out of your door every day and face the world as yourself? Um, I think if I can sum it up, obviously there are multiple things that do that and obviously Mac beat helps, but um, to sum it up in one adjective, I would say would be solidarity. Solidarity in, in my chosen family, in my community, knowing that if I'm going through um, something incredibly hard and I'm having one of those dysphoric days when I don't feel that my gender truly aligns with how I feel like my identity is. I know that they will be there for me to support me. And if I reach a sort of like um, gender euphoria, that there is someone there to celebrate that with me as well. So I think solidarity in, in the community, in my chosen family, because our community have faced years and years, decades of oppression and, and judgments. And I think, our biggest asset as a community is each other. And yeah. I mean, absolutely. Just knowing that there are people there to support you. Lena, what gives you the strength to walk out the, your front door every day? Uh, Dominique, that was stunning. Absolutely stunning. And I got to tell you, just here listening to each person's stories, you know, of just like, 
about themselves. You know, most of you I know, Dominic, I don't really know, but I'm just like, wow, this is what I love about our community. You know, it's just, you're never done learning. Like I said earlier, you know, I learned so much just about the way that you represented your, yourself. And I'm like, yeah, so if I'm getting something about it, imagine what somebody else is getting. I'm sorry, what did you ask me again, Bradley? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, this I just is get, it. I'm very into what's happening <laughs> at the moment. So you got to rewind me for a minute. No, I mean, this is it. I mean, this is exactly what Dominique was talking about, knowing there are people out there in our community that support us. But Lena, what, what gives you the strength and the power to walk out your front door every day and to face the world? Something that I will always sound like a broken record, but um, you know, knowing where you came from, because if you don't know where you came from, you don't know where you're going. Okay, so me being a born and raised Manhattanite, like you know, Leif and uh, uh, Kyle, um, it was important for me, especially with my grandmother. You know, she's been a part of the SNM contingency for the Gay Pride Parade since the early '70s. You know, and she was a very well-known um, uh, uh, opera singer. So I grew up across from Carnegie Hall. And, you know, going to 54 and Garage and Saint and Xenons and Danceteria and The Loft, I was meeting all of these colorful people. So therefore, my background, my background to New York was so broad, you know? So when you have that, you, 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 there's no going back. You know what I mean? It's just, it, it broadens and it opens up everything that it is that you do, how you walk, how you talk, how you smell, how you keep your head up straight when you walk down the street. So I have always had, you know, not only just from being a dancer, but I've always had this, like, you know, this, this line drawn in me to always have my head up and be really proud and, and excited about myself, you know? And I say that in a very um, positive way, not in an egotistical way. I love myself, you know? And, and, and I remember always saying to myself, don't ever feel bad about that. You know, I came from that. I'm a very happy, lightful person, you know? And my grandmother said, right. don't ever, ever, ever um, apologize for who you are, especially when you're right for your blood type. You know what I mean? If you're a good person at the end of the day, listen, I always say, you know, if you're not sitting on the toilet and shitting and paying my bills, you can't be bothered with my mascara, honey, really. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, let's keep it 100, you know? Like, if you're putting yes. out that good energy, Maybe that's all you're going to get back. And even if somebody doesn't understand it, sweetheart, it's the delivery of how it's done. You know, and right. each person here and these little Brady Botch boxes, it's a different part of somebody. And then also a little bit of us all. Right. It's very frosted flake, you know, frosted on one side, honey, weedy on the other. Yeah. I think what I'm going to take away from you today the most is right for your blood type and making sure you smell good. Ah! Um well, I so got a whole Kyle. bunch of people. I'm going to say, bro, I'm learning time. <laughs> Kyle, so um, how do you smell? No, I'm just kidding. So how... Um, how no, very good. <laughs> what gives you the strength to, to leave your uh, front door? Um, I think, well, besides appearance and how you look and how you, you know, present, I think the most important thing is confidence. And it starts from within. Um, you know, how you feel mentally is how you hold yourself and also I think confidence um you know it, it has a lot to do with how you physically hold yourself and like you know how other people can read your energy walking down the street so I think um you know practicing working on yourself and who you are and knowing who you are and becoming confident with who you are is you know what helps me walk down the street and kind of tell how someone's feeling about themselves just by how they're how they're walking so I think that's the most important thing because people can read it from far away. Absolutely. And if you file Car Kyle Farmery on Instagram, honey, you can see her walking down the street all the time on her Instagram stories because she's killing it. Stomp in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lathe, what gives you the power to, to leave your front door every day? Um, for me, I'd say kicking fear in the butt. Um, I think that we've, we all have intersectional identities, you know, and, and I, I, I'm also like Lena said, I'm from Manhattan, was born and raised there, um, first generation American and feeling like culturally that, you, you know, you keep your head down and you don't try to stir the pot too much. You assimilate being, being from a pretty conservative family that um, just, they honestly really just want what's best for, for their, ch their child and, and they don't want life to be any more difficult than, than it already is. And I remember just feeling just feeling like really boxed in and feeling like me being myself was one shameful 
and then two, it would it would it would cause me uh, to be unsafe. So growing up and then being like, no, I'm here, um, I'm powerful, I'm strong, I'm resilient. I want to be who I am, and I'm going to be who I am. And I, as scared as I am, I can't I can't be anything else because uh, that just felt like death to me. It felt like I was literally dying on the inside. If I can, if I cannot be who I truly am, then I am. I don't. Ex I can't exist. So it was kind of breaking free of that, and that really is what gives me gives me the strength to get up and keep going. Um, and then now, given the flat the platform that that I have, that I'm so grateful to have, and I'm so blessed to have, because and these doors they opened after I was out as myself authentically, is it kind of allows for me to continue doing that work um, and, and also helping to open doors for other people like me. I mean, that's it. I mean, if we could, if we could make a TED talk about your future crystallizing and realizing itself, once you have actually fallen into yourself and learned who you are and appreciate your identity, I mean, we could literally change the world. So thank you for that. I mean, we're going to be talking about that a lot today. Um, and, I, and I would like to just share that for me, I think about facing the world in two ways, pre-COVID and now post-COVID. Pre-COVID, I was a little bit more, uh, I, was con I was more confident um, because we, I was living my life for 32 years as myself in the trans, queer, gray, non-binary space. And then COVID hit. And then all of a sudden we're stuck inside and when we go outside, we have to wear a mask. And as a trans person, wearing a mask made me feel safer in public because you could not see half of my face. So to me, it gave me confidence that I didn't realize was I needed um, because I could leave every day and know that half of my face was covered and I was safe, especially taking the subway trains, walking on the streets. So when I, when, you know, the news started happening that the vaccine was rolling out and people, you know, we're going to start taking off our masks. I started getting a lot of anxiety, like, oh my God, the world is going to see my face again. And there's something different about seeing someone in person than seeing someone in social media, right? And, you know, we get to control that narrative. We get to look here, sit here, look really nice on camera for everybody. I mean, you all look stunning, but when you're talking about real life and for everyone watching, for a trans or gender non-conforming person, to get up and walk out of their front door takes so much strength, right? Because it's about survival. It's about, it's about being able to go to a job. Excuse me, I'm so sorry, you just saw my dog. Um, but it's about, <laughs> he does that. Um, but for me, I got so much more anxiety than I ever had. So I had to put more effort into myself and getting ready, making sure my hair was a certain way, making sure my makeup was a certain way. And that takes energy more than, you know, it would have during or before, uh, during COVID. So I think now there's so many more people coming out, right? Coming out of the closet or, I, or coming out as trans and uh, expressing themselves and being more free because we had 15 months of work, self-work, reflecting ourselves back at each other, um, ourselves, right? So for me, what makes me confident now is knowing that I have, like Dominique said, a community of people that around me socially and in person, but also knowing that I'm worth walking out of my door without my mask and I, and I have the right to feel safe and I have the right to feel um, accepted in society. And that started with me accepting myself and also getting help. So I know that you know, that was a lot, but I just wanted to sum up that portion because I think it's important that, for people to realize, like, we have normal anxiety as just regular human beings, but trans and gender non-conforming people deal with a whole other level of anxiety and it's intersectional, right? Because it's, it's people of color, it's, it's black trans people, it's BIPOC people. They have a whole other level of anxiety going out to face the world than, you know, cisgendered heterosexual Caucasian people, right? And I think just that understanding and just hearing our stories is, is already changing that. So thank you all. So my next question goes straight to Lena. 
Why, why is trans and gender nonconformity? Wait, hold on a second. That was fantastic, by the way. Like that gave, that gave so many beautiful depths of, I think, just so many people. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that we all realize certain uh, dichotomies of ourselves, you know, because one, nobody's ever lived this way before for a year and a half. You know what I mean? So all of that, yes. And then on a small lighter note, sugar, I love the fact that I could put a mask on and I wasn't getting hooting and hollered at all the time by construction man. <laughs> I was like, oh, who are you? now what? <laughs> <laughs> but then I needed to wear a burka over my body, sugar. So like, look at all this. I was fucked either way. That's what he said. <laughs> <I'm done. laughs> so actually that's perfect transition because I want to know why is <laughs> Is trans visibility and gender nonconforming visibility important to you? And why is it so important for our society right now to see trans people? In one. I love that. Well, all of those things that we were just talking about. And this is like, first of all, looking at this beautiful Benetton ad of these gorgeous beings in front of me, okay? That's what's so beautiful is that our spectrum is very Skittles taste the rainbow. You know what I mean? There's so many different flavors and visuals and sizes. And, and it flavors, and, and, and that's what it's all about. You don't gotta pick one, you know what I mean? I remember when me and my sister Candace were coming up, we were, you know, we were the first two of our kind, if you will, you know? It was like, uh, the, the girls who came before us, they all looked like they came from the same planet, and that's not shade, that's just actuality, you know? It was a particular type of body with a particular type of face. Like they all looked related and, and, and that wasn't relatable to Candace and I, you know what I mean? Like we were very supermodel. We came up during that time. You know what I mean? We were very, um, um, how can I say this? Like, individual. I don't know, we were just very, we were, we were individual, but we were just very, we were just very fresh, very fresh. You know what I mean? In a fierce way, very fresh. You know what I mean? Cause the other girls were fierce but they were all definitely from a certain planet and we were from a different planet. So it was just actually seeing all these planets kind of colliding and being together is what I mean to say. So, um, uh, train of thought. Oh, no, so I love wait, seeing yes. all of the different beauties that people can emulate and find in themselves. You know what I mean? Like I, you know, I, I fluctuate so much with my visual as you all know, and, and those who don't, you know, I've always been a chameleon, you know, but one thing is always, you know, uh, 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 a given with me is there's my, my sexuality is uh, is a part of my camaraderie and my laughter. You know what I mean? Like they go hand in hand. You know, some girls just like to look pretty and they don't and they, they don't want to take themselves they take themselves too serious. I don't, and I think that because I don't care about the way that I quote unquote try to portray myself as looking like a goddess or something like that. Mind you, I'm a fashion bitch down, but also at the same time, I don't take it too seriously. You know what I mean? Like I like to let my intellect and my, um, and my laughter and my, uh, my comedic ways, you know, be the thing that people are attracted to. So therefore they find that and that's what they find attractive. And then everything else is just, you know, little icing on the cake, you know? You're so Absolutely. cute. Absolutely. <laughs> but I, I think that way, that seeing all the colors and for I, what I'm taking from that is the vi visibility is, is important to you because it, there's tr there are so many different types of trans and gender non-conforming people. Yeah. I mean, all just all of us showing up and being here, honey, is beauty and power. You know what I yeah. mean? I, yeah. Like you said, not all of us like wake up like this, you know what I mean? But also at the same time, it's like what it is that you are, regardless of, you know, the, the spackle or the carrying on, it's who we are. Right. It's who we are, you know? So I don't put too much emphasis on any of this. So at the end of the day, you know, that doesn't matter. Like I feel beautiful all the time, sweetheart. So whether or not I got some lip gloss on or whatever, it doesn't matter. I love I Lena know. the way Lena is. And it doesn't come in an egotistical way. It comes in, I've walked my path. I get my strength every single day. And that's my beauty. Absolutely. Kyle, why is visibility for our community so important to society and to you right now? Um, I think that what is happening in society is pretty incredible. I think there's so many different ways that people can express themselves now, especially with, um, you know, all the different pronoun umbrellas and, you know, being able to be whoever you are. But I do think it's important not to get caught up with all the labels. I think it's an amazing thing, you know, what's going on, that there are so many labels now. I mean, there's a lot more than even like, I don't know, three or four years ago. I mean, they've always been around, but there's a lot of possibilities and options now. So I think the most important thing for me is to, to, to emphasize that you don't have to let the pressure 
of all of these new labels and, and pronouns and et cetera, et cetera, um, catch you up, I guess, you know? I think a lot of people have problems and struggle with which one am I, what, you know, where do I fit in? And, um, you know, it's an amazing thing, but it's also, it, I can see it being a lot of pressure for other people. So I think the most important thing is to realize just being yourself is the most important visibility, you know, tactic. Yeah, tactic. 100%, 100%. Uh, I'm glad that you brought that up, sweetheart. That up, sweetheart. I heard feedback for a second. I'm glad that you brought that up, sweetheart, because, you know, myself, you know, yeah, I've been on this planet a minute, but, you know, I'm still learning all of that. You know what I mean? And I don't ever want, you know, someone also too. I think that, you know, the way that you, um, you're, you're speaking to someone that can feel your essence of where you're coming from and whether or not you're being vindictive or shady, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, mm -hmm. when I'm speaking to somebody or whatever, and, and I, you know, I hate to say mispronoun because mispronoun sounds to me like I knew all your pronouns, but then I missed it and I called something else. So well, we're I think all we all just need to like, too. yeah, we need to take a beat. We need to take a beat. Now everybody knows your show. So if I call you uh, he or she or whatever, don't snap at me. You know what I mean? Tell me. And then from there, I will come correct. I think there's importance in both sides of it. I think it's important for it you is. to try working on it, especially with the they, them pronouns no but i'm saying if now. you don't tell me this beforehand how am i supposed to know but then the other side is exactly that so it's we're having it's, a conversation and you're 50, standing in front 50. of me and i'm like girl you look gorgeous and then they take offense to that or whatever just be like oh you know what i prefer blah blah oh well then they better work exactly. <laughs> i'm sorry i'm listen i'm getting new with it too baby i, I actually would love um kyle we're going to touch on the they them shortly and i would love for you to share your story um, but I think it's important to, to bring Leif and Dominique into this conversation about visibility and why it's important. Um, Cause you're touching on something you both did actually right now touch on the sensitivity. There's so much visibility now. And I think people that are not in the LGBTQIA plus community are seeing this community like expand, expand, expand. And they're caught off guard and they don't know how to approach it. But Leif, I, I don't know if you have advice, but also like, why do you think it is important? I mean, visibility is incredibly important because, I mean, I don't know if, if folks have seen um, the documentary Disclosure um, that's about uh, LGBT visibility, specifically trans visibility in TV and film and how we've been portrayed historically. It's usually there's a trope um, or the bad guy, the evil person, um, comedic relief, but in, in a very negative tone. And I think that just recently it started changing because those, st those stereotypes started, we started to say like, hey, that's not necessarily true. Or we have trans and, and non-binary people and gender non-conforming people in the writing rooms that can actually write these stories from a very authentic and, and real space. Um, so visibility is incredibly important. I know Bradley, you said that there's so much visibility now. I mean, I would argue that there actually isn't because I think that when, when we start seeing a little bit of something that wasn't seen at all. We have the tendency to say, oh my God, this is so much and it's in our face. And I'm just like, actually the opposite is true because everything else is in our face. Um, Cis heteronormativity is in our face constantly. It's all that we see. We get a little bit of queerness and then it freaks people out. And I think that that's why we need more of it. Um, and it's not to say, oh, we just throw it in people's faces. It's for those people that do identify as something that's, that's not, um, quote unquote status quo, something that's different. As everyone here just said, how diverse our community is, is and how differently we all identify and our different relationships to pronouns, to identity, to, to sexuality, to um, your gender identity and our journeys through that. It's very, very different um, from individual to individual. So when we all come out and we all start, start telling our stories, that's how other people are like, oh my goodness, I don't have to, you know, stick to this box or, or whatever the case might be. I can be my, my true self without having to compromise. Um, and uh, I, there's something else that I wanted to say that I kind of almost lost my train of thought. So I may have to come back to it. Um, no, that's but okay. yeah, it's just, it's such a, yeah, it's such a, it's just a beautiful, yeah. beautiful thing to be, be able to be, be you. And I think we live, here it is, we live especially through after the pandemic and what we're able to do now, like what, look what we're doing um, virtually. It's kind of become a norm to have these Zoom conferences and Zoom panels where we can all come together from different places in the world and have these very important discussions and have people from all over the world, world watch. 
So even this, this is representation. This is visibility. We're having these conversations. We're able to, to use our platforms. We're able to utilize our social media in a way that we've never been, have been able to do so before. And I think that um, obviously, you know, the good comes with the bad, but I think the, the positives will definitely outweigh, outweigh, outweigh the, the negatives. I completely agree. And Dominique, before I pass to you, um, just to clarify, I think we need a ton more visibility, but I think that, that the cis hetero community is seeing, right, stepping outside of the community, because I always try to lead if I want people to accept me and if I, I don't want them to, I, they have to accept me and respect me and understand that I'm here. I always try to leave from a place, a place of empathy and compassion. And I try to put myself in other people's shoes to realize like, yeah, it is a lot to catch up really quickly. We've always been here. We have always identified, but we are becoming more visible. And as we become more visible, people are having to learn quickly. So my point was, there is to Lena, what you were saying about the missing of pronouns and, and Kyle brought this up as well. There are two sides to this. And we are unfortunately sometimes the teachers. We are the educators when we don't choose to be right. And there are definitely places like, you know, there's so many documentaries and television shows and, and leaders that can share this information. And sometimes, and actually 90% of the time, the responsibility always will fall on the person that has the pronouns to do the correcting and to do the, the teaching. So I think it is definitely two-sided, like you were saying, Kyle, there, are, there, is a, 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 there has to be some grace given to this experience, right? Because everyone's trying to learn, right? I just wanna say as well, in terms of visibility and you know, teaching, I have to say, I think Pose, the TV show, did an incredible job at teaching you know, a whole new community of people who may have never heard of any of it. You know, imagine you were somewhere where you hadn't met, you know, people like us. And, um, you know, you come across the TV show. I think they did an amazing, amazing job of teaching all different points of views and stories and all of that. So I think if anyone's unfamiliar or wanting to learn more, that's an incredible, like an amazing place to start. Um, something else that you had said beforehand with Leith um, and uh, where Kyle had started from where Leith had picked up um, was that, you know, uh, about the pronouns thing is that, you know, with the generation of kids who are coming up and, you know, creating all of these, you know, different uh, areas of uh, boxes that they feel like they are comfortable in. Um, I think that it's also an important thing to bring up for a different demographic of people such as myself and other people out there watching is that, you know, we have to learn with you guys of what's going on right now, but you also need to do the same with us. You know what I mean? Cause you guys can't think that you are inventing the wheel sweetheart because a lot of your remixes are from our original shit. You know what I'm saying? So I all need you to hop on the clue train and buy a vowel and realize that it's gotta be a Wimbledon, Serena sister situation. Where we gotta go back and forth with this kind of carrying on. You know what I mean? So. Let's like make that real known that that's what this is all about. This beautiful rainbow, right? It's knowing about everybody and everybody's situation. And just because, you know, you get to a certain time in your life, honey, doesn't mean that it stops ticking, baby. It gets better. Right. It right. gets fiercer. I would never want to be where you are right now because I did that. But where I'm at right now is amazing too. And you should only hope to have what it is that I have done and I've been here. And I speak of myself and everybody else to have been here and done this for as long as I've done and shape shifted and been successful at everything that it is that I've done and still not sitting down and still doing it. You know what right. I mean? Because you know you could be here and create all this amazing content on, on online or whatever, but then you, are, you, get, you have to go into a boardroom and sell it. You can't do it because you can't talk to people in their face. You know, there's a lot of stuff that you can't Google and these are called life experiences that you will get from your predecessors of why it is that you can go out there looking all this faggoty way, getting married and be flamboyant. You know what I'm saying? So just pay attention and speak to your predecessors because that's how I got here. I yes. learned from my, my predecessors, right. you know what I'm saying? Some of them who are not here. And that's right. what I got to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> and let me mute myself. <laughs> all good. Lay, I'm to... gonna come to you and then I'm gonna go to Dominique because I would like her to answer this as well. Yeah. Um, I wanted to add to what Lena was saying. I think, I mean, I've always thought that it's very important for all of us to have 
um, groups of friends that are our age, that are older than us and are younger than us, because we're going to learn from all the different generations um, and their experiences. I think that um, to what Lena, the point that Lena was making is that, yes, language is constantly changing. Nothing that that exists now is necessarily new. I think the way that in which we talk about it is what's new. Um, and a lot of people get caught up with the language and um, and wanting to be affirmed so badly that there's, you know, people take offense. And and I mean, it's we're 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 working. We we're our community has been we're a marginalized community. We have a lot of trauma and we have a lot of baggage and we have to, you know, really heal from that. And it's going to take a long time. So I think that healing from our trauma and then learning from each other is the only way that we're that we're going to grow. So back to you. Love, Miss Dominique, visibility. Okay, before I do my visibility, I would just like to highlight how important the statement that Lena just said. We have to remember pride did not start as parades. It started by rioting of trans and gender non-conforming people of color. So let that sink in. Thank you, Lena, for reminding us, even though you did not need to. Absolutely, it was, it's our job to remind ourselves and everybody else that's coming after us. So we wouldn't be here without the people that came before us. Um, and speaking on visibility, I completely believe that casting marginalized people like us, especially, and most importantly, if partnered with a direct call to action in the form of donations, occupational opportunities, so on and so forth, it has the power to change our whole community. It will not only help us get our bodies normalized in cis hetero spaces, but also will literally save lives. In, with visibility comes saving someone's life because you're not an alien, you're not other, you're not something exotic that uh, a cis het person is looking in and seeing a kind of kink, visibility comes with saving someone's life. And I think that's what it comes down to. When, when it, we speak about um, opportunities, career opportunities, especially in like film and fashion in our industries that we are in, it has to be partnered with a direct call to action because otherwise you're activism is performative right and you know obviously like there are like something to be said about seeing the stores right now and everything is rainbow and it reminds us of why we're here but to a certain extent like is that enough like is rainbow washing as you know the our, our generation is calling it now um it's just something that like we have to factor in in terms of like this talk about visibility right yeah absolutely beautifully said dom yeah, thank you. Relates to you you're like the silent but deadly one that comes out and it's like yeah i'm gonna give you exactly what you need to hear so bravo um, exactly I, I think visibility is such a powerful topic and we could talk about this for hours and everyone has a point of view that is so valid and it's valid because we all exist in this community. It doesn't matter if we're 20 years old or we're 60 years old, we exist here and we deserve to be heard and to be seen and to see ourselves successfully thriving in the world, right? And that's why each of you were chosen. I, I chose each of you because you all come from such a different place in the life and different circumstances, different places in the world, and you're all thriving and you are all visible and you lift up people around you in ways that you don't even know. Um, and I applaud you for that because you, there are words, there are words, but then there are actions. And each of you take action in your own way to, to bring visibility to who you are and that saves lives. So thank you to each of you. Um, before I get emotional, Dominique, you brought up of brands and you know activism so I want to go um, to you Kyle um, and I want to ask you you know uh, 15 months of absolute insanity happening in the world um, we are all here together um, because we got through it together right 
Um, but a lot has changed socially. You brought it up. Um, so that's why I want to ask you, you know, everyone has a different point of view about our, uh, our history um, in the LGBTQI community and specifically with, with what's happening currently with the Black trans community, the POC and bi POC communities. So activism is, is, is now more important than ever for us, right? But how do you show up specifically, um, Kyle Farm Lady, and participate <laughs> in our community for it? How do you show up? Um, me personally, uh, you know, I think it starts on a smaller scale personally for each person, um, but constantly educating yourself for my personal, you know, growth over the last 15 months. Um, my sibling is going by they, them pronouns and, you know, being locked in the house with your family. Um, you know, we are doing very well now, but, um, you know, there was a learning process of the they, them pronouns. And, um, you know, I think it's important to open your mind at the beginning, like, you know, I guess each person will individually have the experience of meeting a they, them identifying person for the first time. Um, and so, you know, it's easy for us to just tell ourselves like, oh, that's really complicated or, oh, that's going to be hard for me to learn or, but, you know, it's important to drop that and just, you know, say, okay, I'm ready to learn, I'm ready to understand. Um, so, but I do think as like what Lena said, it's, it's a 50, 50, it's, both parties' responsibility to, to you know, help each other. Um, so instead of getting mad or, you know, screaming or not screaming, but you know, getting mad at the person, you have the they them person identifying person um, has to has to kind of remind themselves. Okay, they're learning and try to be empathetic and you know. But then also you have to understand what if someone was calling you the the wrong thing you know all the time so that's my personal um experience and yeah I think it's important for both parties to be sympathetic no matter how long it takes yeah you have to you have to understand what the other person's going through mutually absolutely speaking of activism you know how what what how do you feel like you contribute or what is activism to you after these 15 months you said something really beautifully earlier about um, existing. I, I think activism is kind of, you know, people kind of feel pressure to physically be act, like go to protests and be on the front lines, et cetera. But I think also just being yourself is a really, you know, it is a form of activism. Um, just, you know, even if it's just like people in your neighborhood seeing you, you're fighting for yourself to, to, you know, present and be who you are. So you can help in a small scale of changing people's minds and opinions about, you know, us. Um, but I also think it all starts with kindness and humor. I think those are the two most important things. Even if it's just, you know, the person at your deli or like, you know, the bodega or whatever, like as if they'll start to understand and respect and maybe admire, um, you know, people who are different, if you're just nice, if you're not, you know, and also I learned at a young age, if you can make people laugh, they'll like you more <laughs> quickly. But um, yeah, Absolutely. It's activism on a small scale, you don't have to feel pressured to, to physically, you know, rah, rah, do your thing. I just go <laughs> uh, on a smaller <laughs> scale. You're, you're helping to change people's um, understanding and minds just. Yes, 100%. Being, you yeah. change people's hearts, you change people's minds, in my opinion. Um, but Leif and Lena, I have a question for the two of you before um, we move on. Leif, if you um, could give someone advice about how um, they could get involved, they've never been involved in activism or advocacy work for our community, what would you, what would you advise them to do? Uh, well, I think allyship is very important. Um, without allies, you know, our, our movement, it's essentially we we start preaching to the choir. We're essentially repeating messaging to our own community and our own communities who tend to be more so marginalized don't have access to um, a lot of money 
to say that like, and, and resources. And so we need our allies with those resources to help out. And I think that the, what, what our allies can do is reach out to your local LGBTQ organizations, um, and especially ones that center trans people um, and donate and ask questions. They're more, they're usually more than willing to share information and, and talk about what their, what the community's needs are. And it essentially comes down to needing, needing access to the basic things that we need to live. We, for, for historically, we've been marginalized, pushed to the outskirts of society. Um, uh, especially if you were visibly, are visibly trans um, and your appearance is something that, that people found uh, uncomfortable. We were physically, yeah. <clears throat> people would be physically violent and we would be physically forced out into, into silence, into invisibility um, and only allowed to come out at night. Um, so I think that, again, being able to have access to public space, being able to exist in a public way um, in the way that we are able to now, but we need to extend it to more people because there are still people like us in smaller towns um, in the United States and, and, and outside and abroad that they, if they go outside and are themselves, they can be killed and, and are thrown in jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. And Kyle, what you said was so on point, so on point. And I loved hearing it from your perspective as well, because like Bradley said, you know, you, you really did curate a lovely panel here. Like everyone's completely different, but at the same time, the one thing that is we all have in common, sweetheart, is that we see each other and that there's respect. And we really do represent all of those different colors and flavors on that tacky flag. <laughs> I'm sorry. We can get the hues a little bit better, honey. I mean, this is the faggotry community. Am I correct? Hello. But that's another story. I I was literally just screaming, like screaming. My neighbors always think I'm kidding. <laughs> just a side note, everyone knows. Lena and I talk every day and we FaceTime probably once or twice a day. And we're always yeah. like, we are carrying on and screaming at each other like crazily. Um, that's true. It's... I think just just asking the question how I can get involved is the perfect start, right? And Kyle, I love your perspective on not everyone has to be out there waving a flag, no. pumping their fists in the air. It could be as something simple as finding an organization and donating money to your point, Leif. It could be as showing up for a friend, a, a friend that you, you know, are kind of getting that feeling like they're going through something and they just need to know that somebody is there for them. You don't need to tell them why, but just, you know, sit them, take them to lunch, you know, call them, FaceTime them if, if you're, you know, not seeing people in person yet. But I think there's so many ways that you can not be performative, but just have a baseline understanding of how you can be an advocate and an ally. Dominique, do you have any advice? I would just like to say that tip your local drag queen. Thank you. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> when it comes to um, allyship, obviously you guys have covered all the bases, um, but me as a queer Asian person of color, um, challenging the white centric binary space, already brings in a lot of pride in the work that I do. Basically my existence, we begin there. But personally, when I began acknowledging my own queer history is when all the plates started coming together. And so I think this is everyone's assignment after hopping off on this live is, what is your queer history? What did the people that came before you did and what can you do to keep on doing it? Whether that's um, telling your friend that you know works as a sex worker that you know don't take this client because this client has like a shady reputation. You know that doesn't it doesn't sound like activism, but in a way it is activism. Um, and there's all, also this gap between tokenism and representation between brands, especially when it comes to allyship. And I just want to bring up the, the thing that when you have one trans model or you have one non-binary model in your campaign or in your, you know, 
um, fashion windows, it does not mean that the brand is already inclusive. This one person that is in this campaign is an exception in that one instance. Marginalized people should be part of all aspects of the companies in order for us to be able to fill in all those gaps in the lack of acceptance in our society. So that to me is um, being a great ally, making sure all those gaps are filled. Yes. And, yeah, I think. It, uh, point back, drop the mic, period. <laughs> Like, that was beautiful, Dominique. And your gratitude is so amazing. I just want to yes. say something that you said that was so beautiful that I think that will uh, speak to a lot of people out there and on every specter of the situation from binary to trans, just everything. What we see in media, this is a perfect, a perfect example. You know, you see us, quote unquote, looking glamorous or whatever you think we look like, right? On media, all of it. It's always a hyper version of it, okay? So... Girls, boys, them, these, anyone should never ever feel like they are less than because they don't look like the what 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 um, society is seeing. Okay, because trust me, that's exactly how Candace and I felt in the very beginning, and it was like, wait, no, we got to beat to our own drum. You got to do you. You know what I mean? So stop thinking that you've got to do injectables and put the do no. Feel comfortable and embody who you are. You know what I'm saying? And if you feel like that's for you, then do that. But don't let other people's um, narratives and situations put you into this mold. And also, yeah. just because another girl doesn't look like another one doesn't mean that she's less beautiful. It's just that means you all have been hypnotized and brainwashed thinking that everybody who looks like that is considered gorgeous. Well, guess what? Not everybody thinks that. Right. Maybe you all do because you all are nimrods and you've all been having people talking your ear that way. But no, not everybody else does, sweetheart. You're right. just as gorgeous as the next chick. Now let me mute myself. Yeah. I love these Lena moments because I'm always like, what's she going to say next? <laughs> no, but I mean, the, uh, for me, activism, and you've, you've all said so many different things and activism is so subjective to the person. And that's the one thing I want all the people watching to know is activism is what you say it is when you are helping other people find freedom and equality. So however you can show up in that way, you are, you are being an advocate, you're being an ally and you are showing activism. So you could take a small step, you could take a large step. And I wanna take a second to talk about intersectionality. And intersectionality in our community is probably, our, our community is probably the most intersectional, meaning that so many different people from so many different walks of life, ages and races and sexualities and gender expressions all coming together, right? And I think when, when, you, when you understand that as an LGBTQ person, you already have more compassion and understanding for how someone else lives their life. And I think for, for our allies and our friends out there that are watching that are not in the community, I think just showing up today for you is activism. And I want you to know that I'm gonna look into the camera and look at all of your eyes. What you did today by showing up here is a form of advocacy. It's a form of allyship. And hopefully you're inspired to take some steps after this. Um, you cut out, Bradley. Bradley, you're, you're mute. mute. You muted. Goddess bless America. Where did I get cut off? <laughs> um, I would love for everyone to just take a second. We have 30 minutes until we're done. Um, to go into the question and answer feature at the bottom of your screen, because we have one more question. And then I want to be, I want our panelists to be able to answer questions that you have. So go to the bottom of your screen and ask us any questions that has to do with self-expression, identity, activism, our work, you know, because um, I would love for the panelists to be able to ask for you. So my last, um, my second to last question actually is, um, if and ever, everyone can keep it really um, condensed, is if you, um, if tell us what you think other brands out in the world, other than Mad Cosmetics and Estee Lauder co companies can do to be more inclusive of trans people year round, not just in Pride Month. And I'm gonna go to you, Lace. 
Um, I think Dominique kind of hit that hit it right on the nail um, earlier in the conversation. It's uh, include us in in not just not not just tokenism, not just using a trans person or a non-binary person um, or a GNC person in one ad or one campaign one time a year. It's really including us in all aspects of of that. Um, whether it's hiring, if it's if it's a uh, an ad or campaign that requires hair and makeup, um, photographers, videographers, people that are working also behind the scenes, hiring uh, companies, hiring people of trans experience within their company, not just as 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 talent. Um, I think that's all very very important, and to keep that and keep us in mind um, year round. Um, again, where our existence is not just June, and then there is this ten this tendency to rainbow wash, and even with the rainbow washing. Not all of us are being included in that. Uh, you know, plastering a rainbow flag is just plastering a rainbow flag. Where are our faces and our bodies that are, that need to be normalized in this society? Because we're we're still yes, we we all live in our little in our bubbles, and within our bubbles, we're norm we're normalized, and we're we're just regular human beings because as we all are. Um, but outside of our bubbles, you know, you step out somewhere else, and we're just we're a freak show. Um, and I think that 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 needs to change because we are we're we're simply human and we're we're simply existing and we all we come from different walks of life we have different journeys but we all essentially want the same thing we want love we want to pursue happiness we want to be able to just exist yes we are not the easter bunny or santa claus or the tooth fairy that comes out once a year we exist we need to eat we need to be in food campaigns we wear mascara, some of us. We, you know, shave, some of us. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, there we are, are humans, and I think that's another part of of allyship is understanding that someone that's trans or someone that's gender nonconforming is not is a human first. We all transition. None of us are the same we were June twenty third, twenty twenty. Every person changes, right? Every day, right? We all evolve. Um, and I think brands are starting to realize that, right? When it comes to their comprehensive health care, their benefits, their, you know, recruiting, their, their um, hiring processes. You know, I, the, the trans person shouldn't just be in front of the camera. The, the, the trans person should be holding the camera, should be, you know, editing the photo, right? Um, and I think you said it. So to all of my panelists, before I go to the questions that we um, have are starting to get actually this is great um, please in just a few words and please keep it brief um, what does trans uh, Lena's like what do you mean what are you talking about girl <laughs> um, what does um, trans excellence and gender non-conforming excellence mean to you and Lena we'll kick it off with you could you repeat that again sweetheart I'm sorry you got caught up from me what does trans excellence or gender nonconforming excellence mean to you? And we're going to go from Ooh. to Kyle to Dominique, and we're sure. going to wrap up with Leif. Okay. Uh, for me, showing up, you know, uh, uh, Dominique and Leif and Kyle, you, we basically have all said it. I mean, even just being here, showing up and also listening. Listening is the biggest gig. If you listen, baby, you're never going to wonder. And your questions will be answered. Stop always trying to pop off at the mouth, thinking that you know everything and that you've got something to say, because guess what? So does everybody else, honey. Opinions are like what? Everybody's got an ass, right? I probably did that wrong. I'm better with my own material. But you know what I mean? Listen, <laughs> listen, and you will get your answers, you know? And also people have a different perspective than other people. So you also find your rhythm of how it is that you communicate with people by listening, you know? So. That to me is trans excellence, listening and paying attention and doing your homework. And like you said, Dominique, everybody's got some homework to do after this. I love that girl. You are so fierce, honey. All of you All fierce, of you. honey. Don't <laughs> want to take away from nobody. Bobby. And let speaking me heal of, myself again. Speaking of school, I think Lena would be the professor that like, if I got her on my roster for college, I'd be like, yes, I got Professor Bradford. Yeah, she pops off every class. Like, just wait, just wait, and show up to class with like a pop, like pop tarts, and like, uh, like my my Gatorade, ready to like watch her like live her life. Um, who did I say? Did I say Miss Dominique? Trans excellence, gender nonconforming excellence. What does it mean to you? 
Um, trans excellence and trans and GNT excellence for me, seeing myself in the Mark Jacobs billboard, seeing myself in the, <laughs> in the Mac ads. Um, but more importantly, you know, as glamorous as those sounds, um, trans excellence is having access to housing for um, homeless LGBTQ youth, having access to healthcare for people in our community. I think that's to me is the real reason why we celebrate prides. And that to me is the true hearts of trans and gender nonconforming excellence. Oh, and just one more thing, if I can just, you know, this sounds also like woo hoo hoo, but you look at somebody like um, Cyan Dora Show and the way she's managed to wield a whole trans housing for Black trans youth is incredible. You know, so these words, they're not just fluff. Like you, you can actually create something. It's so empowering that changes people's minds and changes people's hearts. And that to me is trans excellence. I love it. Thank you. Ayel? Um, I think trans excellence is kind of, I think allyship has the most to do with it. I think not being afraid to, you know, compliment someone or ask them a question or just be like real with someone who's part of our, as Leif said, freak show. Um, you know, because just by accepting someone and not treating them anyway, you're kind of making them feel weirder, I guess. So, you know, publicly saying, you know, you look nice or something, if you notice something or whatever, I think it's all, it all has to do with allyship and that's excellent. It's feeling a connection with someone who's not part of where we're from, you know? Absolutely. Lay. I mean, we are trans excellence, all of us, not just um, us here, but all trans and, and GNC people. Um, I mentioned earlier, um, we have so much talent. I think we're, we, I think we are the most talented, the most capable um, because of our, our experiences. And I think that all these, these gifts are so easily transformed transferable into any field, um, any occupation, um, very easily with, with training, despite a lot of uh, trans people not having a formal education. And I think that just shows our resilience and our power and our capabilities. And I think that by not, have, not including us and not showing us off to the world, you're doing the world a disservice because I think we're pretty damn awesome. <laughs> I completely agree. I think Baby. and struggle and suffering and and having to build yourself up to survive really builds a skill set and a life and a life experience that kind of makes people unstoppable. To be honest with yeah. you, because we understand uh, we understand suffering, um, and not all of us suffer the same way. And not and intersectionality is important there because some people suffer less than others and have had to face you know, not as much oppression or uh, lifetimes of oppression. So um, beautifully said, Leif. Lena, what were you gonna say before we go to the question? Thank you, sweetheart. I'll make this really quick, sweetheart. What I wanted to say was that, um, you know, for such a long time, you know, uh, especially gay men, you know, uh, kind of really ostracized, you know, um, the, the, the flamboyant and the colorful, you know? And it's so funny. Now it's like such a small margin as opposed to all of this beautiful rainbow of avant-gardeness is now literally coming to the forefront, you know, especially when I was coming up, you know, it was like the looks, you know what I mean? So it's so nice to see the pendulum kind of, you know, switching over, you know what I mean? And really seeing them kind of like embrace because before it was, it was so divided. And that's another thing is that, you know, in our community still, we have a lot of work to do. Don't sleep on that. You know, we will come for each other fiercer than the people out on the street. And that is messed up, the fact that we can still be so divided, but yet who is getting up in the yags and all dressed up on Halloween, honey? All of the gay uh, white men, 
You know what I mean? But where are you during the rest of the year, honey, when black trans sisters need you to show up for them? You know what I mean? So I'm gonna leave that up there and I'll mute myself again, sugar. Um, I mean, another incredible moment from the Lena Bradford, absolutely. Um, it's, it's so important to acknowledge that, right? Um, but I wanna share with you all some comments that we're getting from the audience before I go into the question. So someone is saying that uh, you all look amazing. They're so excited to hear your voices. Um, beautiful, Miss Renee is snapping for Dominique and Lena. Um, we have someone here that says they're listening from the UK and they're feeling so inspired um, and happy to be here. Uh, an incredible human says, uh, it's not a question that you're all amazing and trans and gen gender non-conforming excellence at work, loving this combo conversation so much. So uh, Miss Anna has a question for Dominique. So you mentioned something about gender euphoria or dysphoria. Um, can you tell us more about this and what people can do to support a friend or a loved one who is feeling dysphoric? I think she meant to say dysphoria. Um, in order, at least for my personal experience, um, the way I would like people to have shown up in that time when I was having a gender dysphoria and not gender euphoria is that I wasn't given the space to even explore who I was. There was people who were dictating what I should do, what, what I should be, what, how I should dress. I think to show up for your, to your friend, show, the best way to show up for your friends is giving them the space, whatever that means, helping them with, you know, a 20% of their rent so that they have some sort of like backing or um, lending your apartment to them for a weekend so they can, you know, dress up and be away from a toxic blood family that might be putting on very heavy gender dysphoria on you. I think that's the best way to show up for a friend that is going through those dysphoric times. And there's also something to be said about helping um, point out when you see and call out if you see a friend being gender dysphoric to uh, a, another uh, friend of yours that is in the community. And I think it's important to stand up for them because personally, I wish that's what happened, you know, when I was younger. So that's, that, that would be my advice. You know, so last thing is to be careful with, um, and also acknowledging your privilege, your privilege, whether that's, you know, from the color of your skin, from, from your gender identity, I think that's like personally a, a first step that you can take outside of another person, outside of becoming an ally to another person is acknowledging all of those privileges. Yes. You are a great friend and I know you do all those things and yeah. I wish I had done those things for you more before I knew you. Um, but we show up for each other. Um, oh, I think I just want to clarify for, for people watching, gender dysphoria is an actual medical diagnosis, um, but it, it, in, in layman terms, it means if someone is born uh, an assigned gender, or they're assigned a gender at birth, but they feel dysphoria or they do not feel connected to their assigned gender at birth. So they feel this feeling of anxiety, self-hatred, self-loathing, all those things can be tied into dysphoria, um, having social anxiety, all of those things. Um, and then of course, gender euphoria, the goal is to reach gender euphoria where you feel confident and happy in your being and your gender identity um, and feel affirmed in that way. Um, but we have more questions. I mean, they're coming in like fierceness. Okay, Blair is asking, and I would like to ask Leif you this question. Um, what advice would you give your younger self, Leif? Um, growing up, I remember I didn't want to, I knew that there was something different about me, um, but of course I didn't have the language to describe what was different. Um, I just knew that, I, I knew that that difference would, um, make me feel very other oftentimes and I needed to be or feel that I was perfect at everything else that I was the uh at the top of my class the best athlete the most well behaved all these other things because I knew that this one different thing about me 
was going to be something that people would notice and pick up on and then maybe be bullied or be, you know, ostracized in some, some way, shape or form. And I would tell my younger self that you're going to be exactly who you're supposed to be. Um, and you're going to help, you know, push our community forward. And you're going to, all your dreams are going to come true once you're self-actualized. So there's nothing to worry about. And I'm, again, I, Dominique brought a privilege and I, I, we all, I think we all have privileges in, in different spaces. I know that for me, I was able to come out and even though my parents weren't as accepting initially, they eventually did become accepting. And I, I, I work with, I worked with LGBT homeless youth. And I, so I, I understand from, from that perspective, what it, what it's like for these young people to be put out of their homes and be stuck in a system that really doesn't service them much. Um, and, and a lot of them are unable to leave that system because it, they're literally their children out fending for themselves as they were as adults without the right resources, without the right guidance and, and, and they get themselves in trouble. And then sometimes they're unable to leave that, that system. So I, I acknowledge that I had privilege that I had family to guide me and that I was able to um, kind of I was able to get an education, a formal education, which obviously is not, it's not the end all be all, but for me and my path, it was very important for me to have that. And um, there's also my access to, to medical care. I was able to access, it was difficult at first, but I was still able to access and navigate my medical care and my physical and medical transition. Um, and then my appearance, I'm not visibly trans. So I'm, there's some safety in that where I can walk out into the world and, and feel safe. Um, and then on, there's another, and another layer to that is also that I am viewed as, um, as attractive. I'm a quote unquote conventionally attractive, which has also opened doors and allowed me to enter spaces to talk about certain things. And I, I do, I am very aware that if I wasn't these things that I probably wouldn't have the platform that I have now. So I, I think that again, I'm very fortunate and, and I am very aware of what it is that I have. And I try to do my best to speak on behalf of those that don't have that voice. And, and, and I know that it's not my, my job to speak on behalf of them at all times, because I, my, my goal is really to open the door so that they can come in and have mm. the same opportunities that I've been awarded and they can yes. advocate for themselves. Yes. Yes. Such powerful advice. Um, I, I don't have it. I mean, I have a, I could write a book about the advice I'd give myself, but it would be a picture book with fairies and witches and mermaids. However, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell that advice. My advice is for everyone on this panel and for everyone watching in society. And I'm gonna cut this, I'm gonna put it on my Instagram. We, as a society, we value masculinity more than we value uh, femininity. And we allow young boys that are assigned male at birth and young girls that are assigned uh, female at birth to be masculine. We allow that to happen. We allow them to be powerful and play sports and show up and wear shorts and cut their hair short and, you know, be masculine. All the things that in society are, are masculine qualities. However, we, 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 we devalue and we put less importance in allowing children, boys and girls to be feminine. And my advice is to let young boys be feminine. Let young boys play with dolls. Let young boys put on dresses. Let boys dance. Let boys be free. Because I guarantee you, if we did that as a society a hundred years ago, you'd be seeing a completely different structure of the way things operate in this country and in this world. Um, and if we did that, more NFL players would be out of the closet dating me. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. My point is just let them, let them be feminine because that doesn't mean they're trans. It doesn't mean they're weird. It just means that that's what they like. And when you tell someone what they like, they shouldn't like because it's bad. You create self-loathing, dysphoria, anxiety, and a lot of bad things that equate really terrible uh, things in the future. So let boys be feminine and let girls be masculine. That's my advice. Leif, did you, did you have something you want to mention? Yeah, I wanted to add to that. Um, I think, yes, people do devalue femininity. And I think that um, allowing someone that was assigned male at birth to be feminine, it doesn't make them weaker. 
femininity doesn't make someone weaker. I think it makes them, I make, it makes them stronger. I think that, that there's this idea that, oh, our men are not men anymore. And this is, I think that's just a load of BS because we're, I think masculinity and femininity are a spectrum and masculinity and femininity do not define manhood and womanhood or, or any, whatever gender it is that you identify as. I think that these are characteristics that people have. And I think that they're, you're, they're able to change on the situation. I can wake up today and I'm like, you know what? I feel really masculine. I want to work out. I'm going to, you know, do what I want to do. And then other days, if I want to, I, if I feel feminine, I'm going to be that. And it, it, some, most of the times it looks like loving on, on my brother, for example, in a way that, that maybe my other brother doesn't, doesn't interact. Like there's this, that's something that when I started transitioning, I, I noticed right away is the way that um, cis men interact with each other. A lot of times it's almost performative. Like mm -hmm. we don't want to appear feminine. I want to love on my brother because I love him and he's my brother, but is it gay if I give him a hug? Like, oh, high five, bro. you know, it's really awkward. I'm just like, it's not, it, that's your brother. Or like, even if you're not related, um, uh, like if, if it's not your blood, blood relative, it doesn't, you can love on each other without it being, uh, having anything to do with, with your sexuality or gender identity. Right, right. I love on Kyle all the time in awkward ways. <laughs> um, but Kyle, um, what advice would you give uh, I have a question here. What advice would you give someone in our age group that is struggling to find their identity in the uh, LGBTQ space? What advice would you give your friend? Mm, I think, um, I have to say, I think social media is an incredible tool that has helped us find people who are similar to us. Um, and when you do find someone who's similar to you, you know, don't just admire them from afar. There's nothing wrong with messaging someone and, and saying, you know, I connect with you or this or that, or do you mind giving me advice or could you help me, et cetera. Um, so yeah, and... Uh, Wear ruby woo lipstick. <laughs> um, yeah, and lipstick help. But uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Just, um, that's great. There's Actually. nothing wrong with being yourself, but really like, you know, I find that, um, you know, people say things like, oh, I saw you, but I didn't want to say hi, or, oh, I, you know, love what you do. But there's nothing wrong with relating to someone. Like nine times out of 10, that person's going to relate back to you and you're going to have a, a relationship as a friend. Not like a... As a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, absolutely. And Kyle, you're you're constantly in the public eye via social media and other fashion work that you do. I think that's great. Sometimes we don't know that, you know what, our lives are intimidating to other people, right? I mean, we all in our own ways, even though we try in our social medias to be human and to show the world our human sides, I see all of you doing that. Um, and I try to do it myself, you know, the power that radiates from this group sometimes can be like too much. So I think you said it perfectly, connect with them on social media, respond to their stories, um, try to, if, they, if they're doing quizzes and polls and things, engage, because that's how some, I've found some of my close friends now is through social media because we never had the chance to really connect in person. And then once we did, it was like, oh, you're like an old friend. I've known you, I've known you forever. But Lena, I have a very important question for you before we close this baby out. I can't believe it's already been an hour and 22 minutes. It's been beautiful. And you can slide into my DM anytime, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> sugar. Okay, so Zachary says this conversation is so impactful and all panelists have been so powerful. Each of you, I want you to know that. True truth from Zachary's lips to yours. Um, beyond being a year-long ally to the trans community, what should companies do to ensure that trans and GNC employees and consumers feel supported and welcomed by their brand? Well, we definitely touched on that throughout this whole situation, not just having people come on for the campaigns, but having people working behind the campaigns so that you're not worried about pronouns, you're not worried about making people feel comfortable, and they're not just, you know, performing, you know, Dominique shows up, late shows up, Kyle shows up to a gig, and you know you feel so exposed because you've just got like these people who don't speak your language staring at you. Like, you know, like, oh, here's the monkey, perform for me. You know what I mean? 
No, you should have a key grip person. You should have a photographer. You should have a director. You should have all these people, you know, who speak the language, you know what I mean? Who are part of it. Do you think, you think brands maybe should like Estee Lauder companies? They should be working in the house. They should be working in the house as well as on the, uh, the, the trenches. It has to be yeah, one more thing. Baby. One more thing I want to add on top of that before Lena keeps no. going. Go um, ahead. I saw something the other day, also before I forget, ADP. Um, <laughs> I saw someone post the other day, there was a t-shirt that said, uh, there are more than two genders. And that's what the t-shirt said. And then right below it, it said like size and, and gender, male or female t-shirt. And I was just like, what? how does it make any sense? So I think that the, there's an importance in... Um, unisex clothing mm -hmm. <laughs> yes i think that is like the largest thing that puts pressure on people daily because, you know we're constantly shopping we're doing whatever but yet it's all still male or female clothing mm -hmm. so yeah. so more gender fluid spaces in companies so whether you're a retail location or you're selling clothing or makeup or food i think both what you're both touching on is be more inclusive in your branding, but also I think to your point, Lena, is build committees. So maybe you're outsourcing and you're investing in. Yeah, you're in the boardroom, sweetheart. The people in the boardroom should be a part of it. You know what I mean? Tell me about your experience with your people that we can make this. Hello. Yes. My pods I, just said, honey, top. I got ten percent, sweetheart. <laughs> you got ten percent in five minutes. So. Uh, oh, and we got Paco barking up. Okay. Oh, so, you heard him. So um, I, in our last five minutes, I would just love to just extend, honestly, like so much gratitude to all four of you and also to Mac Cosmetics. Um, I have worked with Mac Cosmetics for 15, almost 16 years. And I started when I was a 17 year old queer freshman in college living in San Francisco, California. And if it wasn't for Mac Cosmetics, and Estee Lauder companies creating a space for me to feel welcome and a place where I can thrive and you know actually expand my life into a career, um, I wouldn't be sitting here today. So if we're talking about brands being more inclusive, all four or five of us are living and breathing examples of how MAC Cosmetics and Estee Lauder companies create that naturally. It's a part of our DNA. Um, Laith, I know you have worked as talent for Mac in our huge industry level events that we've done. Kyle, you're sponsored by our artist relations department, um, which is huge. And you're one of your dearest friends leads that department. Dominique, you've also been hired as talent for our, our events and uh, you are uh, wear Mac cosmetics. And Lena, you're also sponsored by Mac. And this isn't because you are trans. This isn't because you are LGBTQIA. It's because you're talented and your talent and who you are is what gets you what you have. And your transness is that extra spice, that extra flavor that really like brings all the boys to the yard and the girls. Do you know what I'm saying? And the they and the thems and the z's and the zers, right? So thank you, Mac. So I don't know if you, if any of you wanted to say anything else in our last few minutes, but Thank you, Matt Cosmetics. And Bradley, that was amazing. And yes, 100 fucking percent, honey. <laughs> I mean, Christian, who I've known from, from Mac forever. I mean, my brother. I mean, I'm just so, and also Bradley, you, you, you speak for us all. You know what I mean? You being in here doing what you're doing, sweetheart, mad homage to you. Mad homage to you, baby girl, because you're just not the visual, honey. You're also the brains too, sweetheart. So I would like to thank everyone from behind the scenes making all of this happen all of you beauties right here. I absolutely love like just this hour and however long we've been here because my pods are about ready to say bye bye bye. You guys are all so beautiful. And I love every time that I'm with either one of the, you that I know and then now Dominique girl, I'm sorry, I live for you oh, girl. Wow. You're amazing, you're amazing. Thank you for including me um, in this. All of this different demographic of who we are is everything that we all are. And I thank you all and I love you all. Let me mute myself. Dominique or Lather, Kyle, anyone? I'd just like to thank, obviously, Bradley for being an amazing, amazing host, for pulling this together. I know this seems like uh, something that you can easily do, but this 
took a lot of hours, a lot of planning, and I uh, want to thank you for sharing your privilege with all of us. And that is like beyond like what an ally can do. So we all know the platform that Mac has and how we can help change lives. So thank you for the visibility. Thank you for, for everything that you do. And to everybody else that's in here in the panel, thank you for sharing all your stories. I know um, me personally, I've been kind of having a hard time with uh, a lot of the trauma rushes back, a lot of our um, inner stuff that we put in a box surface back up in the in our peripherals but your courage your strength and your wisdom is what's going to take our community to where we need to be and that is euphoria so thank you all right so with that being said that brings us to a close late that i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut you off go ahead Oh, no, so I just wanted to say thank you for, for having me. I really appreciate having this time to spend with all of you. You're all absolutely amazing. And I've learned so much from all of your experiences. And it's just, it goes to show like we're constantly learning from each other. And there's no, like once you stop learning, that's when things end and we don't want that. So we need to continue moving forward and continue learning from each other and, and loving, loving on one another. That's the most important thing. And Miss Farmer Lady. I mean, I agree. I'm watching Lena do her lipstick down here. <laughs> I'm like, they need to, they need to make something for her, some, some bomb for. Look at these lips, Mac. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hydrate. Listen, Prep and we will get Hydrate. you some lip balm. We will get you some lip balm. The lip conditioner is amazing. Yes. There you go. All right, everyone. I just want to say really quick, thank you to the entire team that put this on. Um, all of you at Mac, like you're, my team, you're all watching. You're incredible. Thank you for your allyship. I'm like emotional knowing that we pulled this together. Lena, Leif, Kyle, and Dominique, I love you. Go out to the world and change it because we are. And until next time, everyone, goodbye. <laughs>